Hi Bolts, I'm Miss Ivory, your Light Ridge Librarian. I've created some videos to help you with your Enduring Themes project for your AP World History class. All of the information for this project can be found on the Light Ridge Library Student Resources Schoology page. Here's the join code for you, or you can find the join code on the Light Ridge Library website or get it from your teacher. When we're on the Light Ridge Library Schoology page, we're going to click on the AP World History folder. In this folder, you'll find all of the information that I talk about in this video, in addition to three other videos for you about accessing books and ebooks, searching through the databases, and finding good websites. First, we're going to talk about some research tips for you specific for this Enduring Themes project. Pro tips from Miss Ivory, you need to get organized, you need to remember that keywords are your BFFs, bully in like a boss, and use your resources. There's two ways that we need to stay organized. One is to keep our thoughts and our background information organized, and then we need to organize our research as we go. Things to remember, always keep your research questions at the forefront as you're searching. Make sure that all of your results and all the notes you're taking relate back to these important questions. Keywords and Boolean will make your searching easy. Keeping a list of available keywords will help you when you get stuck or you hit a wall when it comes to doing your searching. Always save your citations as you go. There is nothing more frustrating than reaching the end of your research project and creating your bibliography to realize that you can't find an article that you really wanted to use. I've also created three styles of research organizers to help you organize your sources and your notes while you're working on this project. We're going to look at those a little later. Next, we need to remember that keywords are your BFF. Keywords are the nouns found in many different places. These are the items that you're going to type into the search bar in the databases or in Google. First, you need to go to your research questions and find your keywords there. The research questions are going to frame all of the things that you do for this project, and so we need to make sure to include those keywords. Next, you're going to find keywords in your assignment. Your teacher created the assignment for you, and they've already given you clues as to what words are going to be important when you're doing research for this project. We also can find additional keywords in the index and the glossary found in many ebooks and print books. They can also be found in references, on websites, or for articles in the bibliography. Somebody has already done the research and you found a resource that you think is useful. If they found other information useful and they share with you the keywords that they used, those keywords will be helpful for you too. Last, we can find them in the subject heading. These are the tags that are in the databases for the individual articles and resources. The people who work for the databases found these words important and relating to those articles, and so they'll also be important and relatable for you. Next, let's talk about our Boolean basics. So we're going to talk about three ways to help narrow and expand our searches. These can be used in the databases and they can be used in Google. The first one we're going to talk about is the word or. If we search hot dog or sandwich in Google, we're going to get all the search results for the word hot dog and all the search results for the word sandwich. This is going to expand our results and give us more. This is what search engines like Google assume we want, which is why if you type in multiple words into Google, sometimes your results don't include all the words you think you listed. In our Venn diagram and our green color, we can see that hot dog or sandwich gives us all the results possible. Using the word and is a way to narrow our search results. If we search hot dog and sandwich, all of our results must contain both of those search terms. Here in our Venn diagram, we can see that we will only get the search terms that are overlapping results for a hot dog and sandwich. Lastly, when you're searching, you might find some resources that are related to your topic, but not what you're looking for. 
we can use the word not as a Boolean search term to eliminate the results that we don't need. If we search hot dog, not sandwich, we're narrowing our results by excluding the unnecessary item. Here in the green, we only have the hot dog items and none of the items that would include the word sandwich. As you watch through the other videos, you'll see how I use the Boolean search term AND to narrow my results in the databases and on Google. Lastly, we need to remember to use our resources. I say that research is like going down the rabbit hole. We're going to use the research that others have done, including their bibliography, to find more resources. The research will lead our project, and we never know where we're going to end up. Always remember that people are resources too. I'm here for you to help and support. You can reach out to me by email, or you can use the bookings feature to schedule an individual research conference if you're struggling. Your teacher is another great resource that you can use. Let's check out the research organizers that I've created for you to help you stay on task while you're doing your research. All three of these organizers contain the same information. They're just done in different styles because our brains all work differently. The first one is using Google Slides. These Google Slides look like individual note cards. Here we have our overview where we can include our enduring issue, our main question, and our sub-questions since one of our tips was to always keep these items in our forefront when we're doing our searching. Next, we have our keywords. For this project, you're going to have two sets of keywords that you'll use when you're searching for your project. The first set will be keywords related to your enduring issue. These keywords will stay the same no matter which civilization you are studying. Then, you'll have civilization keywords that are specifically related to that unit. Using this card, we can list all of our enduring issue keywords and our civilization keywords for each of the units throughout the year. Next, we have two types of note cards. We have our source card, where we list the type of resource, the purpose of the resource, and we include that bibliographical citation so we don't have to find it later. And then we have a note card, where we reference the source we're using. We can take their direct quote, summary, or paraphrase as evidence, and we can take our own notes or commentary on why this is relevant to our research topic. The thing that I really like about using the Google Slides is you can color code the tops of the items. Color coding is one way to stay organized while you're researching. We can change the fill color to another color on the top of the note card. And we can make our sources and our notes match each other. You could color code according to source or you could color code according to your research questions. The other thing that's nice about using Google Slides and these note cards is that they can be dragged to different areas. So we can group our information in other ways as well. This is a great way to organize the information and to be able to move your thoughts around. If you're someone who likes to use note cards to take notes but are looking for an electronic version, this Google Slides template might be for you. Additionally, we have a Google Docs template. Here we have our uh, overview, like a table of contents on the left-hand side. We have our enduring issue, main question and sub-questions. Then we have our enduring issue keywords and our civilization keywords. And then we have these tables where we can take notes for each of our individual sources. If you need more than the tables that are listed, you can copy and paste for additional sources that you may have. Lastly, we have the same information in a Google Sheets. The tabs along the bottom help you navigate the different items for our research. Under the Overview tab, we have our Enduring Issue, Main Questions, and Sub-Questions. Under Keywords, we have two columns for our Enduring Issue Keywords and Civilization Keywords. The Citation tab gives us a chart view where we can add in our source and you can color code these boxes like the note cards. We have our type of resource, purpose, and bibliographical citation all listed in the various columns. Lastly, we have the note-taking grid. This is where we can put our research questions and take notes in the appropriate boxes according to our sources. You can use the color coding feature here too. These are just three ways to help you stay organized as you're working on this project throughout the year. 
This is going to be a long-term project, so please don't hesitate to reach out if you're struggling with any of the individual civilizations or with any of the other research information. I'm always here to help you. Next up, we're going to talk about accessing books and ebooks through the Lightbridge Library and the Loudoun County Public Library.